Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to our coffee morning. It's our 16th coffee morning, babe, I've realised right? today. Yeah,、16. which is pretty amazing, isn't it? 16 coffee mornings. I am totally wowed by what God has been doing with us, in us, through us, and,、um, and in you. And it's just so good to have you joining with us again this morning. We are expecting that God is going to move powerfully, that He's going to move in our homes, He's going to move in our lives, and,、uh, and we're going to be trying. Transformed by gazing on him today. So I just want to encourage you right now, wherever you are, whether you've just thrown yourself on the sofa, whether you've got this on in the kitchen and you're traveling somewhere, whatever it is, why don't you just ask the Holy Spirit to come and speak to you this morning? Lord, we, we're open to you. We want to hear from you. We don't want to just turn up and, and not be expectant, but we want to come in faith that you are the God who loves us. You're the God who speaks. You're the God of power and of purpose, and that you want to meet with us this morning. And so we pray as we come and sing our songs to you, as we come and bring our hearts before you, that you will. Come and meet with us. Give us eyes to see your glory and your beauty and your majesty this morning. Give us hearts that respond in deep affection to you, we pray. In Jesus' name, Amen. Come, let us worship our King. Come, let us bow at His feet. He has done great things. See what our Savior has done. See how His love overcomes. He has done great things. He has done great things. Oh, hero of heaven, you conquered the grave. You free every captive and break. Chain, oh God, you have done great things. We dance in your freedom, awakened alive. Oh Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high. Oh God, you have done great things. Hey, you've been faithful through every storm. Be faithful forevermore. You have done great things, and I know you will do it again. For your promise is yes and amen. You have done great things, God. You do great things. Oh, hero of heaven, you conquered the grave. Every captive and break every chain, oh God, you have done great things. We dance in your freedom, awake and alive. Oh Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high, oh God, you have done great things. You have done great things. You have done great. Above it all, Hallelujah, God, unshakable, Hallelujah, God, will do good things. Hallelujah, God, above it all, Hallelujah, God, unshakable, Hallelujah, You have done great things. Yes, oh hero. And break every chain, oh God! You have done great things. We dance in Your freedom, awake and alive. Your name's a sun savior. Your name lifted high, oh God! You have done great things. You have done great things. You have done great.
breaks the power of sin and darkness whose love is mighty and so much stronger the king of glory the king above all kings who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder who leaves us breathless in awe and wonder the king of glory the king above all kings this is amazing grace this is unfailing love that you would take my place that you would bear my cross you would lay down your life that i would be set free I sing for all that you've done for me. Yeah. Let's sing that together, and who breaks the power? Who breaks the power of sin and darkness? Whose love is mighty and so much stronger? The King of glory, the King above all kings. shakes the whole earth with holy thunder who leaves us breathless in awe and wonder the king of glory the king above all kings this is amazing grace this is unfailing love that you would take my Who brings our chaos? Who brings our chaos back into order? Who wakes the orphan, a son and daughter? The King of glory, the King above all kings. Oh, oh, oh. who rules the nations with truth and justice? Shines like the sun in all of its brilliance. The King of glory, the King above all kings. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. That you would take my place. That you would bear my cross. You would lay down your you've done for me worthy worthy is the lamb who was slain worthy is the king who conquered the grave worthy is the lamb who was slain worthy is the king who conquered the grave worthy is the lamb who was slain Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. He is worthy, worthy. This is amazing grace. This is a faith in love. That He would take my place. That He would bear my cross. You would lay down your set free oh jesus i sing for all that you've done for me jesus i sing for all that you've done for me jesus i sing for all that you've done for me we sing of all you've done this morning lord we praise your holy name praise you lord
what a privilege it is to be able to come before you this morning freely, to be able to sing a hallelujah to you, to be able to sing of your great worth, of your goodness, of your mercy that you pour out and daily, that you daily come to us, that you daily cause the sun to rise and to set, that you give us breath in our lungs, that uh, you cause the birds to chirp and the grass to grow and you cause everything to have life today, Lord. We want to thank you that we come and we can pour out our worship at you again today. And praise my soul, the King of heaven, to his feet thy tribute bring, ransomed, healed, restored, forgiven, who like thee as praise should sing. Praise him, praise him, praise him. together again father like <clears throat> and father like he tends and spares us well our feeble frame he knows in his hands he gently bears us rescues flows praise him praise him praise him praise him why be as his mercy flows yeah, yeah his mercy flows yes oh how fast how wide how deep is his mercy God of grace, praise His holy name, yeah, praise His holy name. Why don't you just lift up your voice wherever you are, in your room, 
in your homes with your friends. Just praise his name. Just lift up your voice. Thank him. Thank him. Thank him for his grace and his favour. Thank him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We praise you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. Thank you, God. For there is no shadow of turning with thee, Lord. In every season, you're keeping me, Lord. You never turn your face away. season you're watching over me Lord and you're keeping me safe in your hands through every trial you're keeping me you're watching over every time I need you I need you sickness and pain you're keeping me so I will lift up my praise to you again today oh how I praise your name oh God give thanks to you for your love and just forever oh praise the name of the Lord our God eternal one everlasting one get this sense that we need to keep praising his name this morning I know of many friends even if even as I sing I'm interceding I'm lifting up people that I know that are walking through difficulty long-term difficulty short-term difficulty and you know one of the keys for us to be sustained to live well to be carried through this time is to praise the name of our eternal our everlasting word life giver true divine God, the one who we find true life in, true peace in, true wholeness, true wellness is found in Jesus this morning. And we find that as we lift up our praise, as we offer up our worship, our adoration to him, we find him in the mix of all these difficulties.
What a powerful name it is The name of Jesus Christ my King What a powerful name it is Nothing compares to this Powerful name it is The name of Jesus Death cannot hold you This death cannot hold you the veil tore before you You silenced the boast of sin and grave And again, death And death cannot hold you The veil tore before you You silenced the boast of sin and grave The heavens are roaring The praise of your glory What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. What a wonderful name it is, the name of Jesus. What a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus. Darkness flees at the name of Jesus. The lies shatter at the name of Jesus. The other voices that boast are silenced in the name of Jesus. Nothing has a hold on you anymore because of the name of Jesus. We honor your name, Lord. Yours is the highest name of all. Jesus, all power and glory belong to you. the highest name of all. Jesus ascended in glory, forever victorious, mighty God. You're the the risen King, far above all gods, far above all things, every knee will bow, every tongue confess, Christ 
says, Lord, you're the Holy One. You're the Holy One. You're the risen King. Far above all gods, far above all things. Every knee will bow, every tongue confess. Christ is Lord. One more time, you're the Holy One. You're the Holy One. You're the risen King. Far above all gods, far above all
light Oh how great is our God Share with me how great is our God And I oh, will see how great How great is our God One more time, how great How great is our God Share with me how great is our God and I oh, will see how great, how great is our God. Amen. Oh, it's so good to sing of His greatness and His worth this morning, isn't it? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for time to breathe, to enjoy you this morning. Amen. Well, coming up next, I have a wonderful interview with the amazing Canon J. John. He has uh, got a new book coming out, and so we're really excited to share um, some good news about that this morning. So why don't you stay tuned and hear uh, my interview with him, and then I will be back with a word for you. Good morning, J. John. Good morning, Lou. Great to see you as always. It is so good to see you. You're looking very Christmassy there today. We are looking very Christmassy. And all this went up yesterday. In fact, I'm one of these people that loves Christmas and I, I could put up Christmas stuff in September if I, if I could, but my wife won't let me. Uh, but today we have been filming for Christmas, hence the background. It looks amazing. So you tell me that you've got that your wife won't let you put up your Christmas decorations. For those of us who don't necessarily know who you are, you know, what you do, could you just give us a little bit of insight into who you are, your family, what you do, that sort of thing? Of course. Well, I'm married to Killy and we've been married for for 38 years so we've got the silver medal we're going well for gold yeah i know and i'm a father and i am a grandfather got three grandchildren interesting grandchildren make adults of the parents and children of the grandparents <laughs> and i i think i've got more patience with my grandchildren that i than I ever did with my own children. Uh, someone said that grandchildren are a gift from God for not killing your own children. <laughs> but anyway, no, I love my children. Aww. But uh, And really, so we, we have a ministry of evangelism where our basic and primary call is to communicate what is the good news of Jesus Christ. So we've been doing that for four decades. Amazing. That's incredible. And um, some people watching might think that you were actually born, came coming out of the womb, preaching the gospel of Jesus. But I, I believe that there's probably a point where you encountered Jesus personally for yourself. And I just wondered if you could share us a bit about that story. Yeah, absolutely, Lou. Well, I was an agnostic growing up. Even though I, I am Greek and I grew up in a Greek family, which means it's Greek Orthodox, but we didn't really practice faith. We were more cultural Greeks. And I was an agnostic, went to college in London in 1974, and uh, I met a Christian at the college. And over a period of that first year, he explained to me who Jesus was, he gave me a Bible, he explained it to me. As, and there was one particular day when he showed me in the last book of the Bible, in the book of Revelation, where it says in chapter three, Jesus stands at the door and he knocks. And if you hear the knock, open the door, let Jesus in. And my friend Andy said, have you heard Jesus knocking on the door? And I said, I think so. And he said, well, have you opened the door? And I said, well, where is this door? I mean, I don't, where is it? I don't know where the door is. He said, don't worry about that, he said. Ask Jesus to break the door down. And on the 9th of February, 1975, I prayed, and I think it was the first time I ever prayed. And I said, Jesus, if you're knocking on my door, could you break this door, wherever it is, and come into my life? And I had an epiphany. The light came on. 
and my heart was warmed. And when I got baptised, I remember saying that my friend Andy built a bridge from him to me. And when he did, Christ Jesus walked over it. Amazing. That's wonderful. And even as you talk, it's an encouragement, I guess, for those of us who um, have been praying for friends. It doesn't always happen overnight. Sometimes it's a journey. So for you, it took a year of, of discovering, of researching, of, of finding out more about who Christ was until you reach that moment where um, you got that full revelation of, I want to know him. I want to live for him. And um, I just want to encourage uh, those who are watching. Absolutely, Lou. Yeah. yeah. And, and Lou, on that, you know... Uh, it, life is a process and a crisis and uh, we're all on a journey of faith yeah. but there are those moments Lou when God gives us those opportunities to open the door yeah and if we don't open the door you know if someone if I visited you and I knocked on your door rang the doorbell and you didn't answer and then I yeah. thought, oh, well, I'll, I'll just ring again. You know, you might be in the shower. OK, ring again and you don't answer. And then I ring again and you don't answer. Well, then I'm going to walk away. Mm. And I don't think Jesus ever walks away, but I think we don't hear the knock anymore. Right. That's interesting. That's really. So for me, just as, again, as you're talking, I'm thinking about that moment uh, you opened the door and you received Jesus into your life. But have there been parts of your journey as you've continued to grow in your faith, as you've continued to discover more about who God is? Have there been moments where you felt like, I'm not sure if I can open the door. I'm not sure if I want to keep this door shut. Have there been points in your life where uh, there have been personal challenges for you in your faith that you've had to work through with God? Oh, Lou, absolutely. That's true uh, for you and for me and, and for all of us in this journey of following Jesus. When you open the front door and you let Jesus into your life, into the house of your life, okay, where does he go? I think sometimes we'd like to open a cupboard and push him in. <laughs> and, and then lock him away because we kind of want him in our lives, but we're not quite sure about him influencing our lives. But in fact, interestingly, the Bible says, do not resist the Holy Spirit. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit. Do not quench the Holy Spirit. So when Jesus comes into your life, he comes in by his Holy Spirit. And what that means is we've got to take him down to the basement to clear out the cobwebs, take him into the attic, clear out the bats, take him into the sitting room, the dining room, the kitchen. And it's a whole ongoing experience. And that is what the word discipleship means. Yeah, it's wonderful. You know, where, where you kind of, first of all, in becoming a believer, you have to admit that you need Jesus. Mm. Then you have to commit yourself to Jesus but then you have to submit yourself to Jesus. And it, it's a whole life in doing that. It is. And so for you, have you had a, a crunch point or you know, just, just one moment maybe uh, that you would feel comfortable sharing with us what, that actually uh, you had to, to just open that door a bit more and allow, allow Jesus in? Has there been a point in your journey where you thought, okay, Lord, this is where the rubber hits the road and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to submit, I'm going to allow that, that process to happen? Well, when, you know, when I came to faith and I started following Jesus, Lou, you know, it wasn't easy with my family, my family culturally yeah. Yeah. because they didn't understand uh, what I'd done and um, so it was very, very difficult and they didn't want me to be a Christian. And, and I basically ended up having to leave home and um, I couldn't keep studying because I, um, I, I didn't have any money. Uh, I had to go and get a job to keep myself. And all that whole season of life was really yeah. difficult. And I, you know, with a young, I, young in my faith, but the Lord spoke to me. From the book of Romans where it says as much as it lies within you keep the peace and I felt God said to me it doesn't matter how your family treat you that's not your responsibility but it is your responsibility how you respond to them mm. and that's 
taken many, many years of adjusting and of saying, hey, no, as much as it lies within me, I'm going to keep the peace. That's and I, I will forgive and I will do what I can uh, mm. to build bridges rather mm. than build ditches. That's amazing. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. I think um, it's helpful for us to hear that even for the great evangelist, you know, choosing the, the narrow path sometimes can be painful, can sometimes be difficult. But Jesus has shown us that he is of far greater value than anything else, which is wonderful. Now, one of the things I've, um, I love about you, Jay John, is that you're so wonderful at telling stories that help us to relate and understand the love of God. And over the years, I've heard you preach a few times. And, um, and one of the, your fantastic stories was about donuts. Uh, do you remember that story? I you do. You all the donuts. And I feel like this might be a bit of a theme for you. And uh, I wondered, what is your favourite flavour of donut? Well, I'm, I'm an original. I, <laughs> I don't like all the extras on okay. them, that kind of thing. And um, uh, actually, you know, at my age at the moment, <laughs> got to be a little bit disciplined and uh, this is the age where you can easily pick up furniture disease that's when your chest falls into your drawers and uh, you know you've got to be a bit disciplined so whenever that does happen you know I'm on my bike <laughs> burning it off and I sometimes wonder whether it was worth having it in the first place. <laughs> I'm sure that many of us can relate to that moment I definitely can in fact um, what I'd love to chat about in a minute is your new book which is which is Will I Be Fat in Heaven and uh, on the front cover is an image of a donut and I remember I watched a an interview with you recently and you said that in lockdown um, you'd been productive with writing this book and I thought in lockdown I've probably been productive in eating a lot of the donuts so um, <laughs> actually what I'd love to talk about in these last few minutes together is about your new book Will I Be Fat in Heaven so can you just tell us a bit about that absolutely well here it is yeah. uh, I'm really thrilled it's literally Lou literally just arrived just the hot off the press. Exciting. Uh, I've, been, I've been asked, Lou, how long did it take you to write this? Well, yeah. I, I think it took me 42 years because I've been thinking about these questions uh, for 42 years. Yeah. Personally, I've heard other people ask these questions and I've had to think through them. And then during lockdown, amongst other things, I decided, well, this would be a great opportunity um, to produce this and uh, I eventually selected 38 questions out of oh 100 plus <laughs> yeah. and I spent basically each week I did one question and um, that was my I mean because I'm one of these people that does a lot of things uh, it's kind of multitasking mm -hmm. and, and I need to do lots of different things in a week so yeah. I, within that week I would work on one of these questions and I, I did that for 38 consecutive weeks and I've covered major questions, minor questions, you know, what might be a minor question to me might be a major question to you yeah. and what might be a major question to you might be a minor question to me. So the big questions uh, of, of God, suffering, of life, of heaven uh, and then many other questions. Now one of the questions is Will I be fat in heaven? But the point of that question is, what are we going to look like in heaven? So if in heaven we're perfect and we might have the perfect body, maybe that means we've shrunk. Will people <laughs> recognize us? Because you know how somebody, you, you meet a friend, and you've not seen them for a while and they've lost loads of weight and you don't yeah. recognize them. Yeah. You know, so I was basically using that question to provoke other questions. Brilliant. That's really good. And would you say that this book is primarily for children or is it for all ages? Well, I did a children's book that's similar to this for children. And yeah. that book is called um, That's a Good Question. And yes. I asked 10 children to send me their questions yeah. and I tried to answer them. And what's interesting, Lou, is to try and be simple is very challenging. Yeah. How to be simple without being simplistic yeah. but it, it's interesting how we adults we say to children grow up 
<laughs> but Jesus said to adults, unless you become like little children. Yeah, yeah. And what I found is that many adults were really enjoying and benefiting from the children's book. Mm -hmm. And that's what prompted me to produce um, an adult mm -hmm. book. So this is an adult book. But I, there's no jargon in there. It's de-jargonized. So it's, it's for people of faith, people who have a faith, people who love Jesus, follow Jesus, to kind of look at how do we answer these t sorts of questions. Yeah. But it's for people who don't have faith. And it's for people who are on the journey of faith. So my hope is that Christians will read it and benefit from it themselves, but also seize the opportunity, particularly this Advent Christmas season, and yeah. say, oh, you know, I can put this in someone's stocking. You know, I can give this out to somebody because it's a dip-in book. Yeah. Uh, and today, I think we need a lot more dip-in books. Right. So my hope is, you know, that, I, I mean, I gave this to my dentist yesterday and um, he he was looking through it, and then he's looking through the index, and he goes, "Oh my!" He goes, "I oh I, that's the one I'm going to start with first. Great, you know. And Great. the one he said, "I'm going to start with do all religions lead to God." Wonderful. So um, I would just want to encourage people to grab a copy for themselves and also maybe get another copy to give away either to a friend who is a Christian who, or who isn't a Christian, but grab a few copies, get them in those stockings, get them in, as gifts, pass them on just because you care about your friends. Maybe some of your friends are asking questions or right now are asking you questions that you're not quite sure what, how to answer them. And I would encourage you to grab this book from J. John and uh, dip in yourself so that you can be equipped um, to answer some of those questions yourself. So how do we get hold of this book, J. John? Oh, thank you, Lou. Well, if you go to our website, canonjjohn.com, all the resources are there. And there are so many other Christmas resources. Wonderful. And it, it's a brilliant time, Lou. Christmas is a very fertile, receptive season for us to sow seed, sow seed, into family and friends and neighbors and colleagues. And, you know, the tipping point in me becoming a believer, yes, Andy helped me along the journey of faith, but he gave me a little booklet. And yeah. that booklet was called Journey Into Life. And that booklet was the tipping point. Great. And, you know, you just don't know whether this book or another book uh, or even music, like your music, you know, with some people who don't read, you know, I've given them music, I've given them uh, CDs to listen to, and sometimes God uses that to warm someone's heart or yeah. open people's mind, but give things away. Wonderful. Um, well, just as we close, Jay John, thank you so much. You've been a wonderful guest. I wish we could chat longer, um, but you're a busy man. You've got a lot of Christmas filming to do. And so um, I just want to say thank you so much for joining us this morning. And just wondered if you could just pray for us as we enter this Christmas Advent season. Maybe uh, you could just pray a blessing over us. Absolutely. I would love to. Well, thank look, you. all those of you that are tuned in now, okay, if you have a health concern, would you just put your hand on your heart? Mm. Lord, I, I would Lord. like to ask you now as the great physician that you will release your healing balm and your healing presence. Lord, for everyone that has a health concern, we pray that you'll flush out of their bodies any sickness, any infection. Where there has been any kind of degeneration, we pray for regeneration and we pray for restoration. We pray for health and healing and wholeness in body, in mind and spirit. Amen. Pray, Lord, today, even today, that you will give us a tangible sign of your healing at work. And I pray, Lord God, that you will renew each one of us refresh us. May your illuminating light light our hearts and minds. And we pray, Lord God, for your blessing upon us, the blessing of God, the Holy Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. We pray 
for that blessing and we pray that we would be a blessing to others for your glory we pray amen amen well god bless you and i really look forward to our next uh time together wherever that will be jay john but i'm sure we'll catch up soon absolutely to you and killy and, and to you too bye always a joy lou keep oh. keep 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 tuning us into the melody of heaven <laughs> thank you jay john lots of love to you guys bye Wow, he is so wonderful, isn't he? Thank you so much, Jay John, for just sharing a few pearls of wisdom with us. And um, also for Killy, we went in, she wasn't in this interview, but often they uh, now interview together, work together, and it's just so nice to um, have them and call them friends. But I do want to continue to recommend this book to you, Will I Be Fat in Heaven? It's not, you know, it's quite thin, but there's a lot of content in here. It's written beautifully. I'm looking forward to dipping into it and finding out more about uh, some of the answers for these questions and I hope that you will do that also so remember you can go to canonjjohn.com to get yourself a copy so thanks J. John. so much wisdom love spending time with you and chatting to you but now I get the opportunity to just share something that God has laid on my heart over these last few weeks um, I just I've been carrying something for a little while now and um, I'm hoping that I'll be able to impart it to you in a good way um, and I'd love to encourage us this morning in the good news that God is still moving that Jesus is coming back to, to take us home and also despite how some of us might feel in this season Jesus continues to build his church. We've had such a season, haven't we? We were, we had our lives all kind of flowing and going and we, we knew what life looked like or so we thought. And then we entered this season of COVID and um, lockdown happened. And the, what we thought was our way to connect with God, what we thought was our way to have community, to have church and what that looked like was kind of pulled apart. And uh, some of us might be feeling disillusioned by that, feeling as though things aren't shifting, as though the church is kind of crumbling around us. But actually, I want to tell you that God is on the move and he is building his church. After many months of buildings being closed and our old patterns of church being shifted into to new and innovative ways to build community and reach those around us, we now find that things are beginning to change again, the transition's happening and doors are beginning to open. And we're trying to figure out what church looks like now for us all. Recently, someone read out the scripture from Haggai 1 and 2, where the Lord is calling uh, his people, the Israelites, to rebuild the walls of the temple. And there is a promise in there that the glory of his house will be greater than the former glory. When I heard this, it stirred something in me. There was something of, of faith that stirred in me, that, that sense of, yes, as we come out of lockdown, as we come into this new season of kind of working out how this temple looks, how this building looks, how this church looks, um, and we, we know that the call is for us to come out and actually continue to, to move forwards and seeing his church built, but also that promise of the glory being greater. It resonated something in me. So there's a big old history lesson involved in that passage, but the passage there is not really where I want to stay. It's more about what it stirred in me from that, that um, perspective. The temple or the tabernacle signified important aspects of the covenant that was made on Mount Sinai between God and his people. It was a sign of the Israelites being God's people chosen by him. It was a sign of unity. It was a sign um, that God is one. And so the different ranks and diverse tribes would be united around the tabernacle. It was also a sign of holiness. God is holy and calls his people to be holy. It was a place where God's presence was. The tabernacle, the temple was a holy place, a place of consecration. It was the place where you would go to offer sacrifices and worship prescribed according to the Torah. Before Jesus came there, there was a high priest who would once a year enter the holies of holies to offer a sacrifice for your sins and find forgiveness for you and make peace with God for you, to provide atonement for the Israelites. The temple was the place that signified the relationship between God and his people. Now, when Jesus entered the world, everything changed. The process of atonement, of forgiveness, of righteousness, to have right standing before God changed. Jesus became our high priest to present the sacrifice, the offering before God. But he didn't offer animals as been prescribed the prescribed system so far, no. 
he himself became the sacrifice. And not only that, but he did it once and for all. So instead of having to go every year after year, he did it once and for all, for all time, for all people. Never again would blood have to be shed as an offering or atonement for our sins. By shedding his blood, he became the better sacrifice. And now our peace with God uh, comes through Jesus. That bridge that J. John was talking about, about being able to cross over and be united with, with God is through Jesus. What the law was powerless to do, Christ did for us. He dealt with all of our sin before God forever. Then... When Jesus went into heaven, he ascended to heaven, he said he would leave a helper for us, the promised Holy Spirit. Instead of dwelling in a tent or a building, his spirit now dwells in us. J. John mentioned about God coming and making his home in us. In John 14, Jesus says, If you love me, you will keep my commandments and I will ask the Father and he will give you another helper to be with you forever. Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. Instead of a temple made from a tent or built by stone where God dwelt now, God is dwelling with us and now God is dwelling in us. 1 Corinthians 3.16 says, Do you not know that you are God's temple and that God's spirit dwells in you? It's important to understand the background of this so that you understand what the process was in the Old Testament and then as a result of Jesus coming, what the process is now of how we can come before him, which is why I was giving you a bit of information there. But it's also important to understand that at those times, God manifested himself in the temple and then at particular, on particular occasions. Now, God is present with us all the time. God is with us all the time. We are now the temple of God. We are now the place where God dwells. Yes, he displays his wonder. He displays his glory. Yes, he manifests himself in, in different ways, in different places also. But the promise is that we are now his temple. This is both overwhelming and also incredible. It's not so we can boast in ourselves. Don't you know I've got God in me? Did you not know that who I am? No, we are called to always boast in Christ but it gives us confidence to draw close to him. It gives us confidence to know that we have his breath living in us. The curtain, the veil that stood between mankind and the glory and the holiness of God has now been torn in two and we can now come freely before God through Christ. So we no longer have to go to a building to meet with God, but he is with us, beside us, living in us every day. As we go into this next transition phase of being allowed to connect more, I know some of you have got people in your houses today, some of you are, are listening to this together. As we can enter our church buildings again, there are lots of questions being asked about uh, the building, about how we gather, about the church. Do we really need to meet? I can find God in my own space, wherever I am. I found my online community and that really is all I need. Do we need to go back to the same old routine we had before? I actually quite like turning up to church in my slippers with a cup of tea in my hand. It means I can get my roast cooked in the morning, ready for a good lunch. Are there some things that we could potentially change? Are there some old practices we've been doing for years coming out of lockdown that can actually go? Lots of these questions are actually really good and it's healthy for us to, to just kind of take stock of where we've come from and where we're going. It's healthy to ask questions about what the church should look like and what we should be doing as we come out of lockdown. And today, my, this is not about me actually voicing my opinion on, on those things, although I personally do believe it's really important for us to meet physically if we can. I know that some of you have found uh, online um, just a godsend in your season that you, it's actually really hard for you to get out and I'm not um, putting any of that down in fact I, I love the online stuff and I'm so grateful for you I'm so grateful for this community that we've built over these last year and a half and in no way am I suggesting that that should go actually not at all actually but I do also want to encourage you that God is still on the move and it's important that we still gather together and that you and I have a part to play in his body in his community we the church a community of people are more than just a gabble of misfits who happen to connect every now and then we're a people who belong to Christ, who have a purpose in Christ, who are now united and connecting in and through Christ. 
1 Peter 2 verse 9 and 10 says, But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession. I love this because um, it made me think of the fact that obviously in the Old Testament the covenant was made with the, with the Israelites and, and they were his chosen people. But now through Christ we, the non-Israelites, the, the Gentiles have been invited in to be called the same thing. A chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession. We are now his and we now belong to him. And then it goes on in the scripture to tell us why. It says that you that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvellous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you'd not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. You and I, we are his chosen people, receivers of mercy, and we are called to proclaim the excellencies of God. This is what we're supposed to be doing. We're supposed to be telling people, living out this community, this body, and sharing the good news of Jesus and proclaiming his excellencies. Now, it might be hard for you to hear that this morning. You might say, yeah, Lou, it's okay for you, but I haven't got quite the skill set that you've got, or I don't feel comfortable um, meeting with people or talking about Jesus, or maybe it's a challenge for you at the moment, health-wise, to leave your home. Maybe there's anxiety, there's fear, there's uh, worry. Um, maybe there's real uh, a real sense of if you if you leave, you know, your, your health is kind of in danger in one sense. And so I'm not, I'm not asking you to leave beyond what you can do. This is not a kind of you have to do this, you must do that. But I want to encourage you that wherever you are, whatever place you're in, you have been called as a chosen people and to be called to declare his excellencies wherever you are. It might be that you're writing yourself off this morning and say, well, I've still, like J. John was talking about, I've, I've allowed Jesus into my life, but there's still quite a few rooms that have cobwebs that need blowing out. Or maybe there's a few rooms that are filled with a lot of junk and a lot of mess, and you're not quite sure when the, that mess is going to get cleared up. Well, that's okay. We don't have to be perfect. 2 Corinthians 3 and 4 speaks of this new covenant that we now have in Jesus, the power of this gospel. That is there, transforming us, making us more like him. But then it goes on to say that, but we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that the surpassing power belongs to God and not to us. We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not driven to despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed, always carrying in the body the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be manifested in our bodies. It's not actually about our ability, our strength, our greatness. It's about the power of Jesus, the power of the Spirit, the power of the Father coming to us, making a way for us. It's about the power of the gospel shining through us, shining through this broken, sometimes fragile vessel, this jar of clay. And I was thinking about, you know, when your kids come and bring home their first pottery work where maybe the, the jar looks slightly awkwardly shaped and you're not even sure what could fit in there or maybe it's not glazed and it doesn't look that inviting and it doesn't look that pretty. You might feel like your jar of clay looks like that today, but I want to encourage you, it's okay. Actually, it's really important to recognise that, that we are only carrying this in a broken vessel, in a, in a fragile vessel. And it's actually be, it's to show the surpassing power belongs to God and not to us. The wonderful thing about this good news of Jesus is that we get to share with him. We get to partake in this truth of salvation and ongoing sanctification J. John was talking about this journey of life and faith and hope. It's not that we have it all together. It's not that we have all the answers. You know, the whole purpose of him making this book was um, because we still ask questions. But actually we come, we bring our jar of clay and allow the light of Christ to shine through us. I remember um, writing a song called um, Hard Pressed and it was based around that scripture in, in Corinthians because I'd had a conversation with my mum 
I was about 15, 16, and, um, and my mum is, was my hero of my faith. She, I, loved, I loved her dearly, deeply. Her and my dad actually uh, brought us up in the way of God and have invested many hours of prayer and time and love in us over those years of growing up. But I remember this moment, this conversation where my mum was sat on the sofa and, and she felt like her faith was um, flickering. It felt like the pilot light might go off at any point because we'd had a lot of hardship and a lot of uh, difficulty come at that time. And, and she was struggling and she was sat there thinking, I've got nothing. I don't even know if I can continue to believe, but yet I can't stop believing. And I thought, how significant is that? That actually when it comes to faith, it's not about us having all the strength, but it's about allowing this flicker, allowing this light to shine through our, our vessel of clay. It says in 2 Corinthians 2, 15, that we are the aroma of Christ and we carry his fragrance wherever we go. God is on the move and he's inviting you to join him in sharing his story, his power and his kingdom. He's calling you today to declare his excellences, to share the joy of living life in Jesus and the freedom that it brings. This is about going about the Father's business as Jesus did. He has places for you to go, things for you to do. His breath is in you and he wants you to have faith for what he can do through you as well as in you. You might think that your story is not good enough or not complete yet and it doesn't actually matter. It doesn't matter if you're halfway through your journey. It's often through our frailty and our weakness that we get to share the good news properly. When we raise up our hands and we say, I haven't got it sorted all yet, but I rely on the grace of God. That's when we discover his grace at work in and through our lives, reaching others with this good news. It's not about highlighting our vulnerability or exposing us or that's not what it's about, but it's about coming to people. It's about in the middle of our journey saying, hey, this bit is really tough. I'm going to raise my hand right now and say, I haven't got it all sorted, but I have this wonderful God who is sustaining and carrying me through. Whether it's through grief, whether it's through questioning, whether it's through doubts, whether it's through marriage difficulty or health concerns. Over the years, I've seen God use many elements of my life to minister to others. My journey of trust, my journey of surrender, my, my failures, the things I've messed up on, my journey of grief. There's power of sharing in sharing the good news of Jesus, even when you're in the middle of those moments. I've got a friend who actually um, struggled with infertility for many years, probably 20 years, and um, and I remember her talking, she started a series of conferences called Rhythm of Hope. And I remember her talking about it and her and her husband had kind of made a bit of a, a decision that at some point they would share their journey with other people, probably once they got their child, when they got their breakthrough, when they'd seen God answer their prayers fully. And then through that process, they realized that God wanted them to begin to share their story before they got their breakthrough, before they got their answer to prayer. And there was great power in that because people came, people came and heard their story, came and understood, related to this journey. And there was a, an amazing outpouring of God's love and grace. And uh, I just want to encourage you, there are moments in your life that you can use, that you can share to be able to declare the excellences of God wherever you go. I'd like us just to take a moment personally to respond as I talked about my friend with Rhythm of Hope. I wonder if the Holy Spirit's actually speaking to you right now about something that he would love you to do. Is there a neighbour that you can talk to or an area of your work life that you can step out in? Is there someone in your family that you can uh, share the excellences of God with? Maybe there's something creative that God's birthing in you. I wonder if there are areas in your life that you've written off but God wants to use. Let's just ask the Holy Spirit to, to show us right now. Hmm. Thank you. You know, Jesus wants you to continue to tell his story through your story and your story through his story. Whatever stage of life that story is in, he wants you to do that. 
Lastly, when I think of this picture of the temple being rebuilt stone by stone, I got excited because in the Old Testament, the stones were basically, you know, stones around. But now we are his stones being built together into his glorious bride. 1 Peter 2 verse 4 and 5 says, As you come to him, a living stone rejected by men, but in the sight of God chosen and precious, you yourselves are like living stones, are being built up as a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in scripture, Behold, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone, chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. We are the living stones being built together, a people, a chosen people for God's glory with Jesus Christ as our cornerstone. The reason I love linking these scriptures is I just had that image of, oh yeah, the 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 Israelites had gone through exile and it had been a very difficult time, but now they had been uh, given this opportunity to, to build the temple again, this broken shell to be raised up again. And that promise of the glory coming and filling that house was going to be greater than the former glory. And as I heard that, there was a resonance. Yes, we friends are coming out of this season of lockdown where maybe churches look different and maybe some of you feel like it's ended up in a heap somewhere or you feel like some of the some of it's kind of like just been disbanded and broken but there is a call for us now as the living stones to be built up again to build build the temple of God to to come together and to shine his light through us and actually that promise of the the former the the, the latter glory being greater than the former glory, that sense of, Lord, will you come and pour your spirit out in a mighty, incredible way? I've, I re was reminded of that season in 1994 to 98, 99. For, for me personally, it was that time when there was that thing called the Toronto Blessing, where there was a, an outpouring of the Holy Spirit in an incredible way. And there were great uh, signs and wonders, amazing things happened around the world. And, uh, and, I, and for me, that was such an incredible uh, experience of the Holy Spirit of God moving and transforming his people and, and reaching people in, in incredible ways. We'd have meeting after meeting after meeting and encounter God in great deep ways. So when I hear that, that scripture of the latter is going to be greater than the former, I'm like, yes, Lord, let it be so that as we living stones come together, are being built into this temple of God, may he fill us may he fill our nation may he fill our land may he fill our world with it with his spirit in a way like we've never seen before now I feel kind of I just I'm being bold today in sharing that with you because that's something that God is resonating and is stirring up in me and I wonder if maybe you might be feeling that too maybe you've getting that sense of we need God to move we need him to pour his spirit out but, you know, he needs us too. He needs us, the living vessels, the ones that are proclaiming his excellency day after day to friends. He needs us to be in community with one another and to shine his light through us as we serve one another, as we lay our lives down before him, as we give ourselves to him again, as we say, here I am, Lord, send me, build your church, pour your spirit out. I wonder if you have some of those desires um, stirring, bubbling up in you today. Again, I want to encourage you, not everybody can, can do it in the same way. We all have different parts to play. That's why we're a body. God has got different things for us to do. It doesn't have to look like everybody else. It doesn't have to have comparison. But actually, God is on the move. And he says he is building his church. And he's inviting you, he's inviting me to be part of that building. So as we close today, I, it's, a, it's a short word. But I just wanted to give this to you today to inspire you with faith again in God, in what he's doing, in the fact that he's on his move, on the move and in the fact that he's building his church. So just as we close, as we're going to worship, I want to ask us, will we just take a few minutes to pray, to pray for you personally and then to pray for your church, maybe the church that you go to, maybe for the corporate church, maybe for the nation, maybe for those persecuted in other lands. Pray for your leaders. This is a really difficult season of working out what church looks like again. The leaders are asking the same questions. They're saying, what do we look like now? Who's going who's gonna to show up? Who's not going to show up? 
Lord, what are the values you want us to build our church on? There are lots of questions being asked and we need to pray for our leaders and we need to pray for our people. So I just want to encourage you right now, just while you're, while you're here responding, why don't you just pray for a moment and just ask God to build his church again. you Lord let's do a chorus of um, Cornerstone and then go into the other one thank you God that you're on the move and that um, you, we only see in part what you see, you see the whole you get the whole view beginning to the end you see your people gathered. You see your people on their knees. You see your people weeping. You see your people calling out on your name. And I thank you that you promise to respond. You promise to answer our prayers. You promise to hear from heaven and come. And so we just pray today. We lift up our leaders. We pray for them. We pray for wisdom for them. We pray for your anointing. We pray for ears to hear. We pray for the prophetic to see what you see. Lord, we pray for leaders to have strength, to be refreshed in you, where maybe they're weary and they're tired. We pray that you will give them understanding as they continue to walk in your, in your path. And I pray for us as individuals, give us grace for one another. Give us faith that you are building your church. Give us hope and confidence in what you're doing, Jesus, and help us to follow you. I thank you for this incredible call that we are the living stones now being built together for the glory, for the praise of your excellence, that we get to, we get to tell people about who you are. I thank you that in that we have this incredible promise that uh, we don't have to be perfect, that it's not about our strength, but it's actually to show that the surpassing power belongs to God. Wow. How incredible. How incredible, Lord, that you now live in us. You're not just beside us or around us, but you are in us and we are in you. And I want to pray for a fresh revelation of that today. I pray for those who are feeling weak or weary or um, just disillusioned with how to move forwards. I pray that you will give them clarity, that you will give them strength, that Holy Spirit, you will come. And we cry out for our nation and for nations. We ask, Holy Spirit, will you come? Will you pour your spirit out? Will we see you in greater measure than we've ever seen before? Will we see lives change? Will we see salvation? Will we see healing? Will we see your kingdom here on earth? We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Let's actually, let's do Build Your Church. chief cornerstone no other foundation can we build upon not philosophy Jesus. 
crucified raised up from the dead led captivity captive it is finished and he gave us keys his authority and now we are joined as through the praise of his glory glory upon this rock you will build your church and the gates of hell will not prevail when we bind and loose we proclaim your truth and in Lord, we want to thank you that you are building your church and it says that the gates of hell will not prevail. We thank you that our confidence comes in your promises, in what you say and what you're doing. We thank you that you have been building your church throughout history and you continue to do it until you come back for your people. We thank you that you are not surprised with this season and we pray God for wisdom and guidance as your people to know how to continue to love and let your shine your light shine through us as individuals and through your church we want to pray for this in jesus name amen wonderful so thank you so much for joining us this morning slightly different i know uh the 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 word is slightly different um but i hope that it will stir faith in you for what god is wanting to do we've actually had such a massive um season over these last few weeks piecing together albums and concerts and preparing things for you it's been wonderful and we so appreciate your support and your championing and you showing up so we want to say thank you for that and i just wanted to um, remind you that um, Christmas is coming so for two things one we've got our Christmas concert on the 2nd of December and uh, I just want to encourage you to get friends round and and, uh, get some you know food on the table some drinks enjoy singing together we're going to do carols and Christmas songs it will have that family feel like before where we had our children involved there'll be readings and Nicola Pike's going to bring a spoken word and it's really a a great place that you can invite friends to whether they're Christians or non-Christians because we're going to just enjoy the truth of of the gospel through this word and through the carols in a really wonderful way so uh, even if you've got your your services happening throughout December we're doing it the 2nd of December and it will stay up until the Monday morning so it's the Thursday night through to the Monday morning you can watch it so if you buy the ticket you don't have to do it on the Thursday night but we are filming it live that night it's gonna be live slightly scary anyway I just want to encourage you to get that but also just to get get, um, some resources for Christmas presents so we have got a a collection now of mugs I can't quite believe how we've done it but I just want to tell you about them because I haven't told you about them for a while we have the chunky mug 
The large mug. If you like these mugs, uh, if you like to drink out of a large, thick mug, then this one is the one to do. We've got one here that says, Don't worry, your heavenly Father's got you, based from Matthew 6. And the other one that says, Lean on the everlasting arms, which is a great uh, a, a great uh, reminder in the mornings. And then if you prefer a more gentle mug or a more small mug for your coffee or tea, we've got the everlasting arms mugs and the bring it all to Jesus ones. And then finally, I do actually love this one. I drink out of it quite a lot. The give thanks, release the joy mug. So here, I don't know if you can see much, but basically um, the light's too bright on it, but it's gold, uh, gold writing. And it says, give thanks on one side and release the joy. This is bone china. So if you prefer a more china mug, then this is the one to have. And uh, I really enjoy drinking out all of these mugs. I use them all, I have to say. And we've also got prayer journals and I've got another kind of journal diary thing coming in a couple of weeks. And we've got the pictures that you could buy, posters. Um, it is an unashamed plug for all the stuff that we've got because we've got them to bless you. And uh, it will also bless us if you buy them. So we want to encourage you to get some gifts from our store for that, buy a ticket for the Christmas concert. And lastly, but not least, our album came out. Lean on the Everlasting Arms. It's got 13 hymns on it. It reflects what Nathan and I have been doing over the last year with us um, leading worship from piano with us two singing. And that's what's on this album. Some hymns with the piano and voice. And uh, I want to encourage you to get the CD or you can just, it's now out on all digital platforms so you can listen to it online if that's your preferred way of listening to music now. So there's a lot going on. As you can tell, we've been very busy. Um, and we've got some, and we've got a Christmas single coming out in a few weeks too so there's lots to look forward to so thank you so much for joining thank you for staying with me through my unashamed plug of all the things that we have and I do pray that you will know God's blessing and we look forward to seeing you on Wednesday or throughout the week for Worship Wednesday bye but Jesus knows our every weakness so take it to the Lord it to the Lord in prayer still the same forever slow to chide and swift to bless praise him praise him praise him praise him oh glory to my god and king the triumphs of his grace and favor when we
It's the sweetest of sounds I will never be alone I bring it all back to Jesus I bring it all, bring it all back to Jesus I bring it all, bring it all back to Jesus I bring it all, bring it all to Jesus.